students welcome to lecture 3 on the chapter wave optics in last lecture that is lecture 2 we try to understand the fundamental concepts like wavefront different types of wavefront produced by different types of light sources how the geometrical structure of wavefront changes when they undergo the phenomenon of refraction and reflection and one of the important concepts Huygens principle which is the foundation for the wave theory. In this lecture we move forward by carrying the Huygens principle to explain the reflection phenomenon and refraction phenomenon using wave theory. Along with that we will also try to understand the Doppler's effect in case of light. Now try to understand the diagram. Here two phenomenons are happening simultaneously. A beam of light is incident on the interface between two media. the reflection and the refraction are occurring at the same time. So it gives us a picture how actually the reflection and refraction happens. The green color plane which is moving towards the interface is incident wavefront. The blue color plane moving away from the interface is the reflected wavefront and the red color one which moves in another medium is the refracted wavefront. Thus, we have reflection and refraction happening together. Now try to understand, if I consider the beam consisting two extremes, the reflection or refraction at the interface happens at two different instants of time. Incidence and incidence. So therefore, there is a time lag between two reflection as well as two refractions of two extreme rays of the beam. So taking this concept into account, let us try to understand the reflection using Huygens principle. Try to understand the diagram. We have the reflecting surface xy on which a beam of light consisting to extreme rays p and q is incident. p is incident at point a, q is incident at point C and after reflection the reflected rays becomes M and D. Thus we say let P and Q be the extreme rays of incident beam of light and M and E be the extreme rays of reflected beam of light. Ray P is incident at point A at an angle of incidence I. So hence the angle of incidence of wavefront AB is also I as I is equal to angle PAN which is equal to 90 degree minus NAB it is equal to angle BAC. Angle BAC is the angle of incidence of incident beam. It is the angle between the wavefront AB and the reflecting surface XY. Similarly, ray M is the reflected ray from point A at an angle R. Hence, the angle of reflection of the reflected wavefront CD is also R. It is because Angle of reflection R is equal to angle NAD 
which is equal to 90 degree minus angle DAC according to the geometry which is equal to angle D C A. Now, according to the Huygens principle, every point on wavefront AB acts as the secondary light source and produces wavelets. So, if V is the speed of light and T is the time taken by the light from point B to reach the reflecting surface at C by traveling distance V into T, Vt. In the same time T, light from point A produces a secondary wavelet of radius V cross T secondary wavelet of radius V cross T which moves from A to D. The angle between the ray and the wavefront is always equal to 90 degree. So, by taking all these conditions into account, in right angle triangles A, B, C, and ADC, angle B is equal to angle D is equal to 90 degree, BC is equal to AD is equal to V into T as we discussed and AC is the common side for both the triangles ABC and ADC. So, therefore, the two triangles ABC and ADC geometrically are found to be congruent. Due to the congruency, we can say that angle BAC is equal to DCA. We know BAC is angle of incidence, DCA is angle of reflection. So, hence I is equal to R. Thus, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. This is how we explain the reflection phenomenon using Huygens principle. Let us use the same diagram to understand the refraction. Now, you have to focus on the green light and the red light. The green light falls on the interface which is the incident wavefront and the red line is the refracted wavefront. Now, we have this diagram. Now, try to understand what we have in this diagram again. So, we have two media, medium 1 and medium 2 which is separated by a line. Now, the incident wavefront is again AB which falls on the surface. Again, by considering the Huygens principle, every point on the wavefront AB acts as a secondary source of light. So, therefore, the angle of incidence of the incident wavefront is I. and it undergoes refraction and EC acts as the refracted wavefront. Now, let AB be the incident wavefront on the interface between two media. Let at point A, let the angle of incidence be I. And at the same point A, let the angle of refraction be R and by geometry you can understand that that angle ACE is also equal to R. Now, let V1 be the speed of light in rarer medium that is medium 1 and V2 be the speed of light in denser medium that is medium 2. If T is the time taken by the light from B to reach the refracting surface at C by traveling a distance V1 T in medium 1, in same time T the light from A produces a secondary wavelet of radius V2 T in medium 2.
So therefore what we find is we find that BC is equal to V1T and AE is equal to V2T. Now in triangle ABC sin I is equal to BC by AC. So since BC is equal to V1T we have sin I is equal to V1T divided by AC and in triangle AEC sin R is equal to AE divided by AC which is equal to V2T by AC. If I take the ratio of sin i by sin r, I have v1t by ac divided by v2t by ac where ac and ac gets cancelled as being common. So therefore I find sin i by sin r is equal to v1 divided by v2. Now by definition we know refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is n to 1 which is equal to refractive index of second divided by refractive index of first which is further is equal to velocity or speed of light in first medium divided by speed of light in second medium. Therefore, diffractive index n to 1 is equal to sin i by sin r. Thus, the Snell's law is proved using Huygens principle. Now, after reflection and refraction phenomenon, let us try to understand one more concept that is Doppler's effect. We have studied the Doppler's effect in the chapter uh, waves in class 11th. If you see this diagram, in the diagram we have two persons, a boy and a girl and there is a source of light which tends to travel away from the boy and towards the girl. So due to which what is happening is the apparent wavelength is changing for both. If I speak in case of boy the apparent wavelength is increasing and in case of girl the apparent wavelength is decreasing. Apparent change in the frequency or the wavelength of light due to the relative motion between the source and the observer is called Doppler's effect. If you see the picture carefully, you find that, that the color of light for the boy is changing from blue to red and for girl it is changing from red to blue. Hence. When the source and the observer move away from each other, the wavelength appears to increase and this phenomenon is called redshift. And when the source and the observer moves towards each other, the wavelength appears to decrease and the phenomenon is called blue shift. In this diagram, for boy, the phenomenon is redshift and for girl it is blue shift. Now there is a great meaning in this and what the whole concept has to tell is when we see any celestial body we try to predict its color. Now whatever color it appears may not be true always. The reason is there may be the relative motion between the celestial body and V on the earth. If the body is moving towards us, then its wavelength would be smaller than its actual one. And if the body is moving away from us, then its wavelength that appears will be larger than its actual emission. So therefore, the Doppler's effect holds great significance in study of light. The expression for Doppler's effect is given as delta lambda divided by lambda naught is equal to V divided by C, where delta lambda is wavelength shift 
lambda naught is the wavelength of source not moving actual wavelength that it gives v is the velocity of source okay, along the line of sight and c is speed of light thus in today's class we try to apply the Huygens principle to the reflection phenomenon and refraction phenomenon so that we could arrive the expression for law of reflection and Snell's law for law of refraction. Along with that we also discussed the concept of Doppler's effect in case of light. Thank you.